Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Before we get started, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific panelist uh, or you can ask a general question to any and all of the panelists. Also just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And about one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on the same website where you registered for this session. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, which will be McAllister College. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. My name is Jace Riggin. I'm very excited to be here with you this evening. I use he, him, as well as they, them pronouns. I work with students from Illinois. I am your admission counselor at McAllister. McAllister College is a Minnesota liberal arts college of about 2,200 students. We're located in the heart of the Twin Cities and we are a mission-driven institution grounded in our values of academic excellence, multiculturalism, internationalism, as well as service to society. We're not afraid to say who we are. And in fact, our mission and our ethos are a primary reason why many students choose to apply and ultimately enroll, enroll at McAllister. It is because of our location in Minnesota and the Twin Cities that McAllister is one of very few liberal arts colleges in the country located in an urban area. Our campus is about four miles from downtown St. Paul and about seven miles from downtown Minneapolis. Although our student body is on the smaller side, about 2,200 students, like I said, our students have access to over 200 internship sites within eight miles of our campus. An international airport is just under 10 miles away, and uh, you can ride on the light rail to get there. And we have an array of Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered in the Twin Cities. Think Target, as well as 3M. Those are two I'm sure you're familiar with. You'll notice on this slide a few of Minnesota's famous musicians. Prince, Lizzo, and Bob Dylan all have roots in Minnesota. Lizzo got her start on the St. Paul side of the river and then later debuted at First Avenue, a downtown venue in Minneapolis that was frequented by Prince. We have a killer punk scene in the Twin Cities and our music venues and festivals are fantastic. Internationalism and global citizenship are not new values to McAllister College. Max longstanding commitment and enduring part of this mission traces all the way back to our President Turk, who was a World War II veteran and raised the UN flag from a central flagpole on our campus, where it has flown since 1950. Thinking about our campus community today, you'll notice those stats are from two years ago. Currently about 15% of our student body are international students. There are 98 countries of citizenship represented on our campus and our student body collectively speaks 75 different languages. In the past few incoming classes, roughly 35% of our US students identified as black, indigenous, or as people of color. In our most recent incoming class, the class of 2024, that number was 41%. Additionally, 16% of all McAllister students identify as the first in their families to attend college. And I'd like to add that our LGBTQ plus community is vibrant. The Twin Cities are a great place for internships and career exploration, and we have an entire center dedicated to helping you from day one. We are home to the state capitol, numerous nonprofit organizations, and other grassroots advocacy groups. McAllister offers, on average, 300 plus four credit internships in the Twin Cities every year. Internships, civic engagement, and off campus work are available to students during the academic year. And they're also available and paid opportunities during the summer and breaks as well. I want to highlight the fact that 80% of all McAllister students conduct some form of research during their time at Mac. We're also a fantastic place to study a STEM-based field. 40% of all McAllister students major in a STEM-based discipline, and 60% of all STEM majors conduct research independently or with a faculty. We're one of the renowned Mayo Innovation Scholar Program members. This provides our students with the ability to work on hands-on projects at Mayo Clinic and form networks and partner with students from other private and public universities and colleges. 
We are a liberal arts and sciences college. That means we don't just talk about things like art and uh, politics all the time. We have a broad base to our disciplines at McAllister. You don't have to navigate 39 majors or the 40 minors alone. You also have 10 concentrations. These are incredibly unique at McAllister and they span between both academic majors and minors. And so uh, a student might be in an urban geography concentration in both a geography and a political science major. It's really easy to be involved at McAllister. We have over 100 different student organizations. Everyone can be involved in theater and dance and the arts without regard to their major and minor. I'd also like to add that McAllister is an NCAA Division III institution. This provides various opportunities for students to be involved in athletics in addition to their academics. We do not offer uh, scholarships for athletics as Division III schools cannot within the NCAA. Quickly want to give an overview of how to apply to McAllister if you're interested. We have three different types of early admission. The first two are binding, early decision one and early decision two. These are for students who know McAllister is the place they want to be. The second early one is early action. This is a non-binding round. This allows students to signal they're very interested in Mac but not be committed to McAllister if admitted. We have a regular decision. This usually has the lowest admission rates um, is the most competitive admission round in our process. We are also a QuestBridge partner. If you have any questions about QuestBridge, pop them into the q and I'd be happy to answer them. Please note that we are test optional. There is no application fee at McAllister, and we meet 100% of a student's demonstrated need. Before I depart, I want to touch briefly on outcomes. Uh, usually within a typical year, 94% of our students are employed or in a graduate program or internship within uh, six months of leaving Mac. And 60% of McAllister students earn a terminal degree like a doctorate or a master's within six years of graduating. My contact information is there. Take care. It was lovely to see you. Have a great rest of the program. Thank you very much, McAllister. Um, as our scheduled second presenter, the State Technical College of Missouri uh, may be encountering some technical issues. We're going to move on to our uh, scheduled third presenter, which is uh, Maryville University. You're on mute, Maryville. Ooh, sorry. Good evening again. My name is Antonio. Uh, I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Maryville University in St. Louis, Missouri. Give you guys just a quick overview about Maryville University. Uh, so as a whole, Maryville University uh, is located in St. Louis. Like I mentioned before, we have roughly about 11,000 total students, but our traditional on-campus on uh, population is roughly about 2,900. We do have all 50 states represented in our on-campus population, as well as 58 different countries. We do offer over 90 degree program options. We're NCAA Division II. Our average class size is about 25 students. Uh, student and faculty ratio is 14 to 1, and we do have over 150 clubs and organizations with over 3,000 events annually for our students. With that said, our top academic programs are nursing, uh, freshman direct entry program. Uh, we do have a physical therapy direct entry program, which is a six and a half year uh, doctoral program, occupational therapy, freshman direct entry, speech language pathology, uh, freshman direct entry. We also have a cybersecurity program and then uh, Rollins, which is the famous baseball company that sponsors our sports management. And we just added computer science, which would include artificial intelligence, as well as user experience, data science, and software development, as well as blockchain. But we do have over 90 degree program options. So for you guys who are a little interested in exploring some doing some academic exploration, there's quite a few different opportunities for you guys to explore at Maryville University. With that said, we're an Apple Distinguished School. Uh, so 100% of our incoming freshmen, as well as traditional students on campus, will receive an iPad as well as an Apple Pencil that is yours to keep uh, whenever you guys graduated. 
Books are already included in tuition and fees. So books that cannot be downloaded to your tablet, you can do, just go pick them up at the bookstore. 100% uh, of our classrooms are a little bit different from what you guys are used to seeing in movies in which a lot of students will sit and just stare at the professor talking. Uh, we do have a lot of round table discussion based in which a lot of our students will get to interact with others in their classroom with their peers, as well as exchange ideas with the faculty as well in front of others, which is actually gives off for a pretty interested in diverse uh, education. Uh, with that said, 97.6 uh, of the students who attend to Maryville and graduate from Maryville University have a full-time part-time job within six months of graduating. Uh, here's the actual breakdown uh, from the positive career outcome. So 85% are those employee, uh, part-time are 4%. 8% continue their education, as well as 1% do volunteer works. We actually break them down by colleges. You guys will be able to see uh, four of our colleges what the actual breakdown is. Uh, with that said, we actually decided to froze, to, well, we froze tuition for the past five years. And this year, we actually decided to take a dip in tuition. So we lower our tuition 5%, uh, which it brought our tuition down 24700 Room and board is roughly about uh, 10300 and we have the one fee, which includes all your books, lab materials, uh, essentially everything that you have to get to go to class. You don't have to buy anything additional. Uh, it's already included in our one fee, which is $2,400 uh, per year. So if you're interested in living on campus, it's roughly about 37466 Of course, prior to financial aid and scholarships. Uh, here's a list of our automatic scholarships. We are test optional. We've been test optional for the past, I want to say, eight years now, and I don't foresee us moving backwards in the near future. Uh, so as long as you meet one or two criteria, you'll automatically receive the scholarships of 3.5 or 27 top 90 on your test score will automatically get you $14,000 on tuition. Uh, they go down 0.5 in the GPA scale and the first drop drops $3,000 into 11. So 3.0 or 24, 24, sorry, 1180 would automatically grant you 11,000. And our bare minimum admissions criteria is 2.5 or 22, 11, 10, and that will automatically grant you $9,000 off your tuition and fees. Two different opportunities uh, for competitive scholarship, pretty similar to uh, the automatic scholarship. As long as you meet one of the two criteria, you'll automatically be invited to come and compete uh, for our competitive scholarship. Uh, and then uh, for the multicultural, as long as you've shown interest, we're all inclusive campus. So anyone and everyone is able to compete for our multicultural scholars program and they award all the way up to 75% off tuition. Few external donor scholarship, as well as uh, couple of St. Louis area. Uh, and then we also have design and visual arts. So if you guys are interested in the design and visual arts, based on a portfolio review, you could be eligible to be awarded all the way to $5,000 in scholarship opportunity. Uh, we also have first robotics and army ROTC on campus. Uh, so those may vary. We always refer students to visit go on. Uh, our application is free. We're part of the Common App as well as Coalition. If you guys can also do our application, it takes literally like 15 minutes. Uh, you can actually fill it out from your phone now. We do a holistic review. Uh, so, sorry, specific program will have specific letter of recommendations requirements. But other than that, majority of the programs do not need letters of recommendation. Uh, this is a short video. It's a 30 second video for you guys to enjoy and see more about Maryville. We also have visit opportunities. So if you guys are still interested, we're still hosting on campus visits as well as virtual visits. And again, thank you guys for tuning in and my contact information. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, thank you guys for your time today. Thank you very much, Maryville University. Um, our next presenter will be Font Bonn University. Thank you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So hi everyone, my name is Jenny Jean-Jacques and I am an Assistant Director of Admissions at Fontbonne University. So if you've never heard of Fontbonne University before, I am happy to tell you all about us. So we are located in Clayton, Missouri, which is a suburb of St. Louis City. 
We are also a very small school, so we only have about 1,200 total students, and that does include our undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral populations. And because we have such a small school, we actually have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. In the next few slides, I'll talk all about our majors as well as our athletics, but I do just want to point you in the direction of a few things on this slide. So the first thing is if you look at the bottom, you'll see all of our social media handles. So feel free to just kind of explore us a little bit later on. If you have your cell phone, feel free to scan our QR codes to start our free application. And then you can also scan the QR code at the top of your screen to learn a little bit more about our virtual and in-person visits. So we actually have over 40 undergraduate majors. I'm only just going to take a moment to talk about a few. So we actually have a speech language pathology program. We have both the undergraduate and graduate programs. We're known for deaf education. We have education in all fields. We also have ABET accredited cybersecurity and computer science programs. And for those of you who might not know what ABET accreditation is, it's actually the highest global standard that an information technology major can receive. So with that, we're actually one of three schools in the entire country who are ABET accredited for cybersecurity. And for computer science, we're one of seven schools in the state of Missouri who have that. For, um, so we have a dietetics program, we have fashion merchandising, exercise science, sports management, fine arts, and data science. We also have some partnership programs with a couple of other universities for engineering, pre-nursing, social work, and occupational therapy. And we also have some really interesting minors. So we have an African-American studies minor, global studies, gender studies, and One Health. And for those of you who might not know what One Health is, it's actually humans, animals, and the environment and how they are all interrelated. So at the end of the presentation, if you like what I have to say, I really do encourage you to complete an application for admissions. So it's completely free. Um, if you do our online application on our website, it only takes about 15 minutes. We are located on the Common app, if that's an easier way for you to do that. All we need is your official transcripts. We are actually test optional for the upcoming school year. So for all students who apply right now, you do not have to submit those ACT or SAT scores. However, if you do have them and wanna submit them, we're happy to take a look at them too. So with that, we do look for a weighted GPA of a 2.75 on a 4.0 scale. Um, and then hopefully you're admitted. If you're admitted, then you'll receive a merit-based scholarship. I'll talk about that in the next slide. But as you're looking through your different schools, I do encourage you to visit campus. We have both virtual and in-person opportunities. And then lastly, if you decide that you look at FAMPA and you've been admitted, you received a great financial aid package, the national deadline to choose all colleges is one, is May 1st. However, we are rolling admissions. So if you need a little bit of time to figure that out, please take that, just communicate with us. Um, I am happy to walk you through the process and my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. So again, here are all of our merit-based scholarships for first-time freshmen. They actually range from 6,500 all the way up to 15,000. For transfer students, they actually range from 3,000 to 8,500. And if you look at the recognition scholarships, we do actually have some that are stackable um, on top of that merit-based scholarship, which is applied before you even file for the FAFSA, which is awesome. So, we are NCAA Division III for most of our athletics. The ones that are in the blue and those are eSports, cheer and stunt and dance right here at the right hand of the screen. So with those sports, they, they are highlighted uh, in blue again. And I just wanna say that those are actually not regulated by NCAA. So those particular sports, you can athlete, actually earn an athletic scholarship on top of a merit-based scholarship, which is great. And again, that's put towards your total financial aid cost. So if you are looking at FAMPON and you're kind of just trying to figure out what there is to do here, I do just wanna encourage you. So this is not a comprehensive list of everything that we offer. We actually have 60 clubs and organizations. I just wanna take another moment to highlight a few. So we have first generation college student mentoring programs such as the 1G Collective or Griffin's Achieving Progress. We have tons of clubs and activities. Um, as you can see, the Black Student Union, Students for Life, the Creative Writing Club. And we have all of those free services that you'll see on the right. So that's tutoring, 
accommodations, free mental health counseling, a campus nurse, advisement, and career services. And so, yeah, so I just want to thank you all for your time. I will be around for questions. That's my contact information. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Fampan. Um, up next will be St. Olaf College. Sorry, I was struggling to find my unmute button there, but hello everyone. My name is Gladys. I am an admissions officer at St. Olaf College. I'm really happy to be here with all of you today. Um, St. Olaf is a small private liberal arts college in Northfield, Minnesota. So we do have about 3000 students on our campus. Um, the beauty about that number is that you pretty much can walk across campus and see someone that you know, but also see someone that you don't know. Um, I think the great thing about this town is that we are a college town. So we are about 45 minutes south of Minneapolis and St. Paul. So not too far from our McAllister neighbors. Um, and one thing I always like to clarify about this picture is that while it looks like we're in the middle of nowhere, we are not. Um, we are in a formal city. Um, we are located on top of the hill. So if you ever communicate with us or get start getting our emails, you'll probably be here, welcome to the hill or join us on the hill a lot. Um, and so that's just a little bit about that. Um, out of the 20,000 people that live in North Hield, 5,000 are college students. And we are pretty close to downtown. So we're about 15 or 20 minutes away from the downtown area, um, which is filled with fun coffee shops, bakeries, um, a really kind of hallmark in real life and a hallmark movie was shot in Northfield. So that's just a fun fact for you all. Um, moving on to a little bit about our campus um, in terms of our majors programs and concentrations while we might not have like hundreds like a big university um, we are designed to have those majors be broad but then experiential learning being one of those really important pieces of saint olaf um, some that I would like to highlight are probably our fine arts. So all of our um, fine arts areas, including music, art, theater, and dance are accredited. So for students who want to have a really competitive experience with that, that is, this is the perfect place for them. Um, from the picture on your bottom right, you can probably see that we also, um, maybe a hint, uh, we're also really big on STEM. So biology is our number one major. We do have a nursing program. Um, and nursing and music would be the two programs that are direct admit. The beautiful thing about study abroad here is that you don't have to study abroad for your major. Um, and so you have plenty of time to explore and be able to tune into different opportunities for you and you can study abroad more than once. So that's one of my favorite parts about St. Olaf. In terms of you know, what we are and what life is like on campus. Um, we are residential. So that 95% of students that you see there is representative of freshmen through seniors, um, not just our freshman class. So we really love community. You will hear that a lot if you ever connect or visit with us, community, community, it's really important. Um, so while we only have one campus dining hall, I think there is a beauty to that. Um, you'll probably run into your friends, your classmates. It's kind of the heart of our campus. And so is that building. Um, it's not the only eating space on campus that we do have a student run pizzeria and a campus cafe with all your needs, whether it's it's coffee, something fried, or if you're feeling healthy, you know, that's an option too. Um, out of those 200 student clubs or organizations, um, we do have a, a number of you, I'll, I'll name a few just for my favorite. Um, Caribou is one that's a multicultural organization for our African and Caribbean students. Um, OUTS is called, is an acronym for Oli's Under the Sun. It's an outdoor program. So whether it's something that's already on campus or not, you would definitely find people to share those passions with. Um, 
And as you can see, um, just recreation is super important at St. Olaf, just as much as the arts. So we do, we are a division three college. Um, and if you want to participate in any of those opportunities, you just have to connect with a coach. So even if you're not being actively recruited, that is an opportunity that is open. And if you don't want to be that uh, involved in that competitive nature, we have club and intramural options as well. Um, where did I do that? Okay. Um, this is a little bit snippet, you know, a little snippet at our um, just application information. Our application, it, you can find it through the Common and Coalition app. It, we don't have an application fee. Um, and the most important thing to consider is which one you're applying through um, to also apply for any fine arts scholarships that you might be interested in. Besides fine arts scholarships, students are automatically considered for merit. And if you're interested in need-based financial aid, then we ask that you submit your FAFSA and your CSS profile. So there are a lot of details that come with admissions and financial aid. So we absolutely encourage you to reach out to our offices. If you ever want to find an estimate, we do have calculators for that on our financial aid website. And we also have one-on-one -on -one sessions available with financial aid counselors at the college if you ever need to connect with them. Um, in terms of our, excuse me, our, our outcomes and support at the college, um, you know, you can have great percentages, but how does it happen? So I just wanted to touch a little bit about that. Um, our Piper Center for Vocation and Career is essentially our career center here at St. Olaf. And my favorite parts about the, the Piper Center are that they have a pretty big team. So the reason they have a big team is that there are different people that focus on different disciplines, um, whether you're interested in the fine and performing arts, whether you're interested in pre-health, or even if you're undecided, there is someone that works specifically with those students. We are very relationship-based, our fact our professors are, but also our staff through this career center. And so intentional advising is really encouraged. Um, but besides that, you, it doesn't matter what stage you are in the process for finding internships, jobs, or campus uh, research right on campus, they are happy to help you with all of that. So if you have questions, please reach out, please connect with us. We are so happy to be here with you all and thank you all for um, listening to my presentation. Thank you very much, St. Olaf College. Um, up next will be University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Thank you, Chris. Give me one moment, everyone. Okay, just want to say thank you for everyone being here with us tonight. My name is Adam Britton, and I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions with the University of Nebraska, uh, based regionally uh, in Chicago. So one of the biggest things that makes the University of Nebraska unique is we're actually the smallest total enrollment in the Big Ten, which kind of puts that in perspective because we still have about 21,000 undergraduate students uh, from all 50 states and over 130 countries throughout the world. Uh, but really, uh, another really exciting thing, I guess, uh, about the University of Nebraska is we're also one of the largest college towns in the nation. Uh, about 300,000 people live around Lincoln uh, as of this year. And so it's a growing uh, college town, it's a growing tech uh, city, and really a, a transportation hub for uh, our students as well. So it's really easy to get to and from Lincoln. Uh, we're a lane grant institution and also the flagship university in the state of Nebraska. And so that means as we provide a lot of research opportunities for our students, uh, working with faculty and staff that are helping change the world. And that's been very relevant uh, throughout the, the recent pandemic. Uh, and we've been really leading a lot of research opportunities uh, that have impacted not only the state of Nebraska, but certainly the rest of the world. And campus is right in the heart of downtown Lincoln. So our students are really able to navigate campus very easily, but then also able to get throughout the city of Lincoln uh, very easily. And then Omaha is about 45 minutes away from Lincoln, which is the largest city in the state of Nebraska as well. And so a lot of really great opportunities in a very close reach. In total, we have about 150 uh, programs that students can pursue at Nebraska across 10 different colleges. Our College of Business is our largest college at Nebraska, along with our College of Engineering, College of Arts and Sciences, we have a world-renowned um, agriculture program, uh, agricultural engineering as well, uh, very fantastic college of journalism, and really everything that students uh, can ask for in an institution. 
providing with you providing you with a lot of opportunities to get involved throughout campus uh, through over 500 different student organizations as well. And being a Big Ten institution really means that students are able to participate in a lot of athletic opportunities on campus. We have uh, NCAA Division I athletics, uh, but then also, again, that research piece as well. Uh, this recent uh, 2019 fiscal year, we uh, used $317 million in research expenditures, which uh, set a record at Nebraska and something we're really proud of and uh, certainly something that uh, it gives us a lot of optimism for the future and just what the power of our students are going to be able to do, but also just the overall opportunities that these students are going to be afforded. Uh, Lincoln is geographically right in the center part of the country. So I mentioned it being a transportation hub. Uh, Interstate 80, which goes across the entire country, runs right through Omaha and Lincoln. Also, uh, where I'm based around Chicago, Amtrak is a very uh, well-used service. Uh, that goes from Chicago right into Omaha and Lincoln as well, uh, putting students right on the edge of campus. Our students are able to have cars on campus. Uh, you're also able to uh, still get around uh, the city through our bus system and be able to navigate campus uh, through all ends. So again, very, uh, very easy and very economical for a lot of our students uh, across the board. Uh, and with our students coming from all 50 states, our largest areas uh, comprise Minnesota, uh, Texas, Illinois, uh, and a lot of our students are continuing to come from the Northeast as well. So it's certainly an area that we're really excited about, uh, and I think it really provides students some opportunities to get to know students uh, that have a variety of different backgrounds overall, because really uh, we want to make sure that students are, are opening their, their eyes a bit and, and uh, certainly being able to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and get to know other students from different backgrounds. Here's one of my favorite uh, images of campus. Uh, this is a, a pretty good view of everything uh, that, that you'll see throughout Lincoln. Uh, to the right side of the image, uh, a lot of our residence halls are kind of cut off there, but uh, certainly uh, a, a really great opportunities for our freshmen and our students overall. We have 15 different residence halls that students can live in all have AC. Uh, our students honestly live in some of the nicest facilities, not only at Nebraska, but throughout the Midwest. Uh, we have a variety of different suite style, traditional style, and apartment style halls that students can live in. Uh, and you can see all of the ins and outs of those uh, facilities uh, through our, web, our housing website, housing.unl.edu, uh, virtual tours of all those facilities, as well as the dimensions. So it can be really interactive to kind of give you uh, perspective on what those look like. Um, but then you'll see right at the top of this image, uh, our Memorial Stadium, which is uh, where 90,000 fans pack the stadium in the fall. Uh, the nation's longest sellout streak, uh, Husker Athletics and Husker football in particular is a huge part of campus life at Nebraska and uh, certainly throughout the state. Uh, really, our students are uh, able to have a sense of pride uh, by attending Nebraska and graduating from Nebraska and essentially have the entire state behind them. So uh, certainly a really uh, phenomenal opportunity for students and just a, a true uh, atmosphere and part of the culture in Lincoln. We're a very active city as well. So like I said, you're able to get around pretty easily, but we also have 130 miles of trails uh, throughout Lincoln. So students are, are able to walk, uh, you know, uh, hang out the lakes, um, bike on the trails. Um, so very outdoor kind of focus. Uh, but our students are also able to take advantage of all of our recreational facilities. Uh, and truly, uh, Nebraska has some of the best facilities in the nation. And so our students really get uh, some really great opportunities overall. Outside of your classes, uh, Lincoln's also one of the most affordable places to live. And so uh, gas is cheap, groceries are cheap, uh, and then uh, also just living as well. So, you know, our students are able to live on campus or live throughout uh, Lincoln pretty, uh, you know, affordably overall. I wanted to highlight that we've got uh, almost $300 million in uh, facility upgrades throughout all of our colleges and something that we're really proud of. Uh, it's really elevating the programs even further and certainly something that we're really excited about for the future. Want to touch on uh, lastly here, uh, one of our um, biggest updates was uh, moving to be test optional for fall 21, 22 uh, terms but then also revamping our scholarship awarding process. And so we were able to do that for fall 21 students, but then we're looking to uh, obviously do that for the fall 2022 term as well.
Great. Thank you very much, University of Nebraska. Um, it looks like, unfortunately, State Technical College of Missouri uh, will not be able to join us this evening, but that does leave us with a little bit of extra time for any of our attendees to ask questions uh, via the Q&A. It also gives us some time uh, to answer some questions ourselves. So if I could ask all the presenters uh, to turn their video cameras back on. And the first question I would pose to you while we're waiting to see what questions our attendees have is, six minutes is not very long. So what is one thing that you did not have time to include in your presentation that you'd like to quickly cover? Could be your favorite event or tradition, a fun fact, information about campus visits, et cetera. So we'll go in that same order. So let's start with McAllister. So I just I just learned this. I'm not a McAllister alum. I, uh, I learned this yesterday. Uh, Bob Dylan's daughter went to McAllister, fun fact. And so there's a nice, there's a nice reference in our, our Bob Dylan uh, photo. Great, thank you. Uh, Maryville. Um, so students get to uh, ring our traditional bell uh, when they get initiated into classes, and they also get to ring it at the end whenever they graduate. So, so fun fact. Uh, also, we have a break, guess walk, uh, which will put every single graduate's name as well. All right. Thank you. Uh, fun fact. Thank you. So my fun fact is that we actually have the Erdley Family Clinic for Speech, Language, and Hearing, and it's free, nonprofit, and it's actually dedicated to meet the needs of individuals of all ages and economic needs. Great. Thank you. Uh, St. Olaf? Yeah, um, I put, the immediate thing that you see when you drive into Northfield is a big sign saying, welcome to Northfield, cows, colleges, and contentment. But I think the other C that is missing from that is cereal. And so that's because we have a cereal factory in Northfield. So if you're on campus or visiting town, you can walk outside sometimes and it just smells wonderful. <laughs> so that's my fun fact about both campus and Northfield, um, but the cereal bowl is what happens when Carleton College and St. Olaf are playing against each other. So that is by far one of my favorite activities, but fun facts too. All right, thank you. Nebraska? Warren Buffett, uh, Johnny Carson are two uh, notable alums. And also uh, if anyone watches CNN from time to time, Jeff Zeleny is the senior Washington correspondent uh, and uh, also a Nebraska alum. And then uh, Gabrielle Union, uh, Dwayne, uh, you know, famous actress, uh, is uh, married to Dwayne Wade. Uh, Gabrielle is a uh, Omaha native, and uh, so Dwayne Wade's actually been on campus a few times attending sports events. So certainly uh, something we're always excited to have on campus. Great, thank you. Um, and my last question, which I'm sure uh, some of our college searchers might be interested in your answer is, uh, what's a piece of advice you have for a student going through the college search process, both uh, in normal years and, and pandemic years? Um, and go back in that same order, uh, starting with McAllister. Put me on the spot. Um, I would say be yourself in the search process and the application process. Don't try to be someone you think the college wants you to be. We really want to get to know you in the application process. Um, and part of being yourself can sometimes be scary because it, like me, with some anxiety means showing up at virtual visit events and asking questions, but it's okay. I, I guarantee that everyone on the call today wants to help you in your college search and application process. Um, and so my biggest piece of advice is be yourself. Look for those colleges that feel really like a good uh place where you're going to feel that you belong and you feel uh, supported. Um, sometimes they use the word fit, but, but I think about belonging and being supported. Um, so that's my advice for you. Enjoy the search process. It, it, it's fun, even in a pandemic. My sister just went through it um, and, and we're, we're, we're still trucking through the first year of school now, so. Great, thank you. I'm Maryville. It's hard to follow that after Jay's, but I'll echo everything he said. Uh, and then I say one piece of advice is whenever you guys are applying to college, create the specific email 
that you guys will actually use to apply to every single college. Because uh, whenever you guys, majority of you guys just use your school emails and actually your school's email actually blocks our communication. Uh, and we send you uh, quite a bit of important information via email uh, and it gets to the junk file and we have to nine times out of 10 switch your email out. But that's probably my biggest piece of advice other than be yourself and ask the questions that no one dares to ask too. That's the first time someone has brought that up and that is very good advice. Uh, Fampa. Thank you. I really appreciate that email advice. That was spot on, I think, for both our students. And I was like cheering in my head too, as in it, on the admission side. So thank you for saying that. Um, I'm also going to echo Jace a little bit too, and just talk a little bit more about the fit. And I want to say too, I think the fit is in so many different ways. Like you have to have a good academic fit. Does the school challenge me? Does the school have the resources that I need in order to thrive? Do I find clubs and activities that I want to get involved in there? Is it a good social fit? Um, is it a good cultural fit? Do I feel represented on campus or at least embraced if I do come from a different identity from most of those on campus too? So I just say, I think finding your fit and also finding you're fit in a variety of ways. Like it should really feel like your favorite sweater if that kind of helps <laughs> um, help you all realize what that should feel like. Thank you. Great, thank you. I know it gets harder as we move to the final folks to add your piece of advice. So feel free to expand that, perhaps a frequently asked question you receive um, or a piece of advice. So St. Olaf. Yeah, thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, absolutely, again, echoing everything everyone has said. Um, one piece that I would really stress is that often students will feel unsure or uncomfortable reaching out to an admissions officer. Please don't, that is the joy of my job. <laughs> I get to connect with you. I get to answer your questions, whether, and I'll speak for St. Olafra, whether you wanna call me we can text, that's totally an option, or email. Um, virtual connections, of course, are absolutely normalized now. And so if you live far from campus um, or can't come but still want your questions answered, just reach out. We are so happy to be able to serve you and support you through this process. You're not the first one to probably ask the question or the last. Um, so please, please use our time. Um, it, helps us learn about you. So when I'm reading your application, I get to hear your voice maybe when I'm reading your essay. Um, so please let us know how we can support you. That would be the biggest thing that I stress. Great, thank you. And Nebraska. Uh, some obviously amazing points I think everyone's really touched on. Uh, and, and I think one thing that a lot of students I think tend to get hung up on is uh, exactly what major they wanna focus on and uh, what career field right away. And, and uh, that can be a, a real source of stress and also something that maybe is dictating where you end up uh, and, and, and decide on officially for school. But um, I think it, it's important to um, point out that it's okay to not know exactly what you wanna do with the rest of your life. And um, for a lot of students coming in undecided or undeclared can be something that is a really good foundation for you because it forces you to think about uh, those interests of yours. Uh, it, it helps you narrow things down and it really helps you think ahead. And there's gonna be tons of resources, especially freshman year to help guide you through that process. So that way you don't need to do all that right now, uh, you know, before you've even stepped foot on campus. Uh, there's a lot of resources that you're going to have that freshman year uh, in that first year overall on campus that are really going to help you find out those things. And students grow, people grow, and your interests now as a 16, 17 year old might be different than when you're 19, 20 uh, in, in, in a university. So um, something just to kind of think about. Uh, you don't have to uh, focus on one area. There are tons of opportunities for you to, to really explore those things um, once you're officially on campus. Great, thank you. And thank you to everyone for your great advice and your informative presentations. I'm sure our attendees uh, appreciated everything that you shared. And certainly we wanna thank all of our attendees for joining us this evening. Uh, just a few quick housekeeping items before we close this session. Uh, the first is that when you close your window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that you ask that you take a minute and complete. 
And again, about one week from today, recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again uh, to everybody um, and to all of our students. Uh, good luck in your college search. Have a great night.